and welcome to Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Justin, and I'm sitting next to my friend and colleague, Tony. Me. And today we'll be talking about the... Trailers, 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 trailers. Trailers and trailers and trailers. Rogues, Rogue One trailer. Black bed trailers. Fifth wheel trailers. Short bed, bed trailers. trailers. 18 wheeler trailers. Motorcycle trailers. There you go. All these types of trailers. Uh, welcome to the Mechanical Podcast, where we don't <laughs> talk about video games or movies, or comic books, only roadware. Except for not. Doctor Strange, Drug One, Suicide Squad. Those trailers, coming up. So, what's going on, Tony? (laughs) He's just smiling at me, I don't know what to say. The PlayStation 2 is officially dead. Wait. Final Square Enix has finally taken down the Final Fantasy XI oh, servers. No. So there oh. is, I mean, whoever played anything online on the PS2 anyway, slash, you can still play most of the games on the PS2. Right. So. But support. But support uh, has finally ended for the PS2. It's over. In Sad 2016. Day. It lasted for 16 years. That, that console. That's quite a lot. It is uh, quite, quite the successful little run it's had. I would say. That's right. Melee, one of my favorite games. Oh, yeah. Is 15 years old. I guess next year it will be equivalent to the PS2. Yeah. And they've lost all support for Melee. True. So. But it's a great game, and it, I'm sure it'll stay around forever. Right. For years and years to come, until people stop caring, which may never come. Ooh. So. Shadows of Mordor 2 is in production. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're a gush. <laughs> oh my gush. Uh, I really enjoy Shadow of Mordor. What did you enjoy about it? I enjoy... Literally just the enemy. First off, I am Lord of the Rings. I you am. You are Lord of the Rings? I am Lord of the Rings. I am become better. I'm also Star Wars, but I'm also Lord of the Rings. And just the setting itself, like, it was essentially, to me, an Assassin's Creed game in Lord of the Rings. And I loved it. Now, it was way more than that, because Assassin's Creed... At least in recent installments, I've not really enjoyed that much. But the whole rival system was yes. fun. It was a good time, you know, getting people up the ranks, all the assassinations of the generals and going through all that. That's fun. Uh, I enjoyed all of it, the story and everything. Um, yeah, so two, what do you expect from two? More of the same? Well, uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the ending. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't the play ending? any of the DLC. Sucked. So I don't know what the DLC had, but... Was there DLC for it? Yeah. There was like, uh, you know, the dude with the hammer, the ghost dude who helps you the whole time. There was yeah. his story was oh, one of the DLC, scene? yeah. Um, but I, I wasn't very happy with the ending. But all the gameplay, the mechanics of it, the skills. I forgot about how bad the ending was. I borrowed it from you, yeah. and I beat it, and I just gave it back. I'm like, I don't want to play this anymore. Cause yeah, well, so don't you just like fight the mouth of Sauron or like some random? It's not even not much, so much of a fight. It's not really. I mean, like the whole game is like. Fighting, like, similar to how you wouldn't assess the so, like, you counter and you do things like that. Right, and, and the other fight is, like, a quick time event. Yeah, that one, it's just, it's so scripted. And it's not hard. Lame. So, uh... Lame. Other than the ending, loved the game. So, two, I'm guessing you eventually fight... Maybe there'll be no ending to two. May- maybe, maybe it goes not. on forever. Maybe. A perfect game. Because the timeline-wise, it happens before Lord of the Rings. The books. Yes. I because it's when the Black Gate, the very beginning is the Black Gate being taken back by the orcs instead of the people from Gondor, if I remember right. Because Gondor had that as a station. And the it, Black Gate? Yeah, the Black Gate area. There's like a and now the orcs there. have it. And the orcs have it. So I don't know. Uh, but I expect it to be pretty awesome. I don't know story-wise where they're going to go with it, but hopefully there's a better boss battle at the end. Yeah. Another sequel. Another sequel's map has been revealed today. Can you oh, guess which oh, sequel? Oh, mm, another sequel's map has been revealed. Yeah. Uh, Without looking at my notes that you can plainly see? Uh, Black Ops 3. No. No. Uh, Battlefront, Better. I know there's a new Better. map coming out. Better than those two. Oh my god. Better than those two combined. Uh, I'm thinking Tony. Tony really enjoys Ratchet and Clank. So, new Ratchet and Clank map. I don't know. 
Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh my goodness. The map has been revealed. Ooh. It's a prequel. How exciting. Is that is that not better than Black Ops 2 and or Black Ops 3 and Battlefront combined? Uh, Red Dead Redemption? I will have to say that in terms of my personal motivation to play a game, nothing has actually matched my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption. Didn't you like do it? Like, I over did it weekend? in twenty hours. In, Straight? In, yes, essentially. I, I played it from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed for two days. And then I was done with it. I, yeah, so I could making, not stop playing that game. So they're making a sequel. So that's exciting. That's actually a prequel. Oh. Because of events that end that happen in Red Dead Redemption. Mm. You clearly need a prequel. Yes. To the ending. Um, but if you remember the Red Dead Redemption map, uh -huh. the Midwest is kind of like that city. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like where the map, where the game ends, mm -hmm. where your farm is. Yeah. That's kind of like, I assume that's where you kind of start in this one. Because the this map... That's the farthest west you can go, is the Midwest. Okay. So everything else is to the right. And there's islands, so you can either swim or get on a boat and go out to them. But it'll be exciting. So it's a, is it a bigger, larger map than before? I can't tell. I mean, it's just a, it's hard to tell scale. It just, they just showed a picture. Someone, I guess, that works at Rock, someone that worked at Rockstar, like, leaked the photo of the map. Oh. So it's hard to tell scale. Interesting. But Red Dead Redemption is good. It is very good. Uh, I highly recommend that game to anyone who's not played it before. Even still. It oh, came yeah. out in the early stages of Xbox 360 and PS3. Yeah. Still good. Still good. One of the best games to not have been ported to the Wii. Because <laughs> that would be awful. Uh, maybe. Wii ports I don't know. happened. The only Wii port I actually enjoyed was Resident Evil 4. And I actually liked that port way better than the original. Because it, I felt like the controls were easier. If because if you ever played a Resident Evil game, the controls suck, and they do. I feel like they do it on purpose. Intentionally, because you can't you can't walk until the new, most recent one. You couldn't walk and shoot. You had to stop, aim, and then shoot. Is that because the aiming analog stick is the same as a walking analog stick? Uh, no, it's the same as your view. So it, it like stops wherever you're looking, and then you can be like. Oh. Looking around. So, uh, from what I understand, they did that so that way, like, I mean, honestly, if there's a giant thing coming at you, you're not probably going to be very accurate when you're running and gunning. Yeah. Uh, so I understand that part of it. But also the fact that you just can't run away. You're either fighting or you, you, you're you running. It's kind of how... It Fight forces, or flight. Yeah. It forces you into those decisions. So, uh, that's the only one. The only port I actually liked. But it was good. Leon Kennedy. Is his last name? Leon S. Kennedy. Yes. What's the S stand for? Sylvester. Cool. I don't know. I just made that up. So yes, for 3.5. Update. Oh, we're done? Uh, out <laughs> now. <laughs> it is out. <laughs> uh, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the appear offline feature. Uh, I need to use that more often. Yeah, your PS4 is like on right now. Have it's, you been playing Dude, that? no, it's not. Have you been watching Netflix today? Uh... I'm on my PS3, yeah. Oh, well, that's why. That's what I've been doing. There was one weekend where you went away, and yeah. you left your PS4 on. So now whenever I see that your PS4 is on, I'm like, Justin's not. No, well, the thing is, sometimes it might register me online, because my roommates use my Netflix in the living room. And yeah. they use my PS3, and it logs in. But there's so, still a weekend where you left your PS4 on. I mean, definitely there is. One. Why don't you have it set to auto-turn off after an hour? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Why are there poor people? Good question. I mean, I'm sure there's an easy answer somewhere. Easier to but... explain than <laughs> why don't you just turn yours on? Well, you know, maybe the answer is the same. Maybe you're maybe just lazy. Just, maybe there's just a setting somewhere in life that people just have turned wrong, just like how I have my PS4 turned wrong in the settings. I don't know. This is a philosophical question. I'm not about it. Welcome to philosophical. PS4 Adventures update. Club. My favorite part is the appear <laughs> offline. You also can have notifications when certain friends come online, mm. which is exciting. And there's also some other updates that I can't remember. Oh, you can remote play on your Mac or PC. Do you not know that? I remember us talking about this. We've talked about this update before. Yes. Uh, so I do remember it, and I remember getting real excited about it. So here I am, getting excited about it again. Yeah! I thought it was going to come out in, like, June. It came out in... It came out a lot earlier April. than what we expected. Yeah, so I'm excited. So that's some good stuff. I'm happy. Do you know what I've been playing on PS4 that is amazing? Not Uncharted 3? Not Uncharted 3, which is great. Uh, it's the PlayStation Plus game uh -oh. of the month. Bro Force? No. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds. that's just the same as that other game that was up there. What was it called? Uh, uh, I can't remember. 
So this is awkward. Either way, Broforce, you like play as these random little pixelated versions of like the Terminator. It looked like Mercenary Kings. That's the game. It looks exactly like it, but then when you start playing it, the feel is so different. Really? It is very different, yeah. Uh, less customization, but I think it's more fun. In Mercenary Kings, you can have a trombone shotgun. That's true. That's true. But in this game, you can be MacGyver. You can be Rambo. You can be uh, Blade. You can be the Terminator. You can like it, fill in the blank of any action hero from the 80s and 90s. And you could be that character. And it just, like, randomly happens, and they all have their distinct skills. Will Smith skills. from Independence Day? Uh, Will Smith from Men in Black. Oh! And his gun shoots you back every time. It's so funny. Oh, really? There's so <laughs> much, like, character to the game. Now, there's not a lot of customization. There's not a lot of... And I feel like Mercenary Kings had a lot more to it. But it's so enjoyable to play. I Man, I love that game. Pretty sure you can make a toilet gun, too. I'm sure. Dude, that game was pretty crazy. I still have it. I normally delete games like that after I'm done playing them, but Emily really likes to play it. Every once in a while, I'll come home from work, she'll be in here playing for like an hour or two. I mean, the the menus and kind of like the, the story of the game is very similar. Yeah, that's why I didn't pick it up. I'm like, I already have a game like this. You should try it, though. I think it's too late. But not for anymore. Oh. Well, never mind, then. Don't play it I'm on my PS4. It. Maybe. Um, I've been playing Life is Strange. Oh. And also, I just figured up Ratchet and Clank. I have never played Life is Strange, though I've heard so many good things about it. It is good so far. What it's, do you a, think? it's a decision-based storyline game, so you won't like it. Wait, you're just saying this because of the heavy rain thing? Yeah. Dude, if I had played that when it was new, I probably would have been all about it. It's just so slow. Only at the beginning. I know, that's where I'm at. You need to get past My whole experience with it was... So slow. Uh, the first episode of Life is Strange is pretty slow. Yeah. So it's hard to get into. I think there's six episodes. I'm on, I just be, I just finished episode three, so I should be on four. But then I bought Ratchet and Clank. So now I've been playing Ratchet and Clank. So how's that? I enjoy it immensely. It's a lot of fun. I know this is one of your favorite franchises. Uh, yeah. Well, this one you have a lot of experience with. It is. I've played all the Ratchet and Clank games, as well as, like, the ja I always put it in the same category as Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper. And of the three, Ratchet and Clank's my least favorite. Of those three. Hmm. Sly Cooper probably be my favorite, then Jack and Daxter. Then Ratchet and Clank. However, Ratchet and Clank is a lot of fun. I don't think I give it enough credit, because whenever I play it, I always have a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it's just fun. There's a lot of humor in it that is unexpected. So, like, I when I was playing it younger, I don't remember this much humor. It, it was there, I just didn't see it. Or now that I'm older, or that they've it. changed it. But... Yeah. It's very entertaining. I'm not going to see... It. I don't know if I'll see the movie or not. But it's the game based off the movie. And I guess they had to, like, update the game recently so that it wouldn't spoil some of the stuff in the movie. But huh. that's all right. It's a lot of fun. If you want to borrow it, it's the... Uh, officially, it is the a remake of the first one. Oh, okay. But they call it a reimagining. Oh. So it's told from a different character's perspective of still Ratchet Clank. Oh, so it's a very good intro level game mm -hmm. if you want to borrow it. Are you so you're finished with it? No. Okay. Well, when you're done with it, I'll borrow it. You borrow it. I think you'll enjoy it. I need to finish. I'll, I'll finish Uncharted three first. I do that. And uh, I've just been Metal Gear Solid. But how I many just, of my games do you have? I just have Heavy Rain, Metal Gear Solid, uh -huh. Uncharted. Uh huh. Soon to be Ratchet and Clank. That's that's true. How many games of mine do you have? One. Yeah, that's right. Dude, but we've borrowed each other's games for a long time in the past. You've borrowed my Valkyria Chronicles twice. Twice, and you had it forever. And then, uh, what was the other game? There was no other game. Yeah, there was no The cake was a lie. The cake wasn't a lie. There was oh, a cake at the end of the credits. I have your Mass Effect 2 right there. That's my Mass Effect 2 you got still. I let you borrow that like two years ago. Uh, it was senior year of college, wasn't it? Or was it? No, was it freshman year? No. You what were was? living around me where I am now. Oh, okay. I took it from your closet. Oh, that happened? No, you're at the place you live now. So I took it out of the closet. Oh. Have you played it? Yeah. Did you finish it? No. Are you going to finish it? I haven't decided. <laughs> well, maybe... We, I got a lot going on. We can hold it, each no, other's okay. games hostage until Fallout we... Fallout New Vegas is not yours. It's not mine. Uh, it's, it's not yours. yours. It might be mine. It's not. Because I have New Vegas. It's not yours. It's my friend that lives in Texas. Oh, okay. Oh, I know him. You do. I did make he him. He was at the wedding. Yeah, so I actually haven't been playing a lot of video games in the last like, two weeks. That's embarrassing. Because I went on a video game buying spree. Oh my gosh, it's not embarrassing. I bought Life is Strange on a whim, and then Ratchet and Clank came out, and I'm yeah. like, 
mine. So I bought like seventy dollars worth of games in like two days. Wow. And normally I don't. I haven't bought a game since uh, Fire Emblem. Yeah. I think this was last week. Which did you finish month. that? Not yet. I I was playing Fire Emblem. I got it, it's hard. And then I switched to Sacred Stones on my PC. Yeah. Um, and then my file got corrupted, mm. so I stopped playing that. And then I bought Life is Strange, and then I bought Ratchet Clank. Interesting. So, you know, it's it, that's the problem with being a gamer, is that there's so many good options out there. Yep. If you hit a spot that either bores you or is challenging, like, it's so easy just to be like, oh, I'll just try something else for a little bit, and then you and just you get never it. get back to it. Metal Gear Solid is a perfect example. I enjoy that game. I love, I actually, like, really enjoyed it. I put a lot of hours into it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but I, I think Fallout 4 came out, and then I... 100% of yeah. that whole game. And then I, then all my friends were like, get Fire Emblem. And then I got Fire Emblem. Yep. And now I'm halfway through that game, but then I stopped playing it and started playing Uncharted. I kind of want like a list of games that I own and have completed and cross reference with games that I own and have not completed. Because I remember when I had a PS2, I had them in different stacks, like physical stacks. I'm like, oh, I did. have beaten these, I have gotten on these, but I have not beaten them yet. And it was That's always trying to beat them. I should do that. But I'm like looking at all my stuff like, Fallout New Vegas, I'm never going to beat because I just don't care. Kingdom Hearts 2.5 is super good, and I've never beat Kingdom Hearts 2. Dude, you need to do that. You ain't gonna Why? Work. Kingdom Hearts 3 is never coming out. Dude, it is coming out. <laughs> I believe. I'm a believer. I gotta beat Marvel Super Heroes. There's some games I have beaten, some games I haven't. I gotta figure out... I gotta find why I'm beating some and haven't beat others. Yeah. It's there's just, there's gotta be some root cause to this. Yeah, there's gotta be a common denominator. I don't know. This is rough. This is rough. I'll figure something out. I'm sure maybe we can find it out. Maybe we'll write a blog post about it. There you go. That's a good idea. Are you going to write a blog post on the website ever? I have notes. Then why don't you do it? A whole, I have a whole oh, like page gosh. written about Namor, the submariner. Nice. How much do you know about him? Absolutely nothing. You'll find out. I'm so excited. Before some work Are you going to accept that invite I gave you to the website? Then? It's still on my email. It's, in, it's, there. it's just there. Um, <clears throat> back to the topic at hand. Yeah, that was a little bit of a tangent. Um, Avatar. We've talked about it before. No. I don't like it. I enjoyed it. You thought it. it was good. I enjoyed it. Would you watch it again? I would watch it again. Would you watch something very similar to it? Slash a sequel? I mean, probably. I mean, uh, yeah, I'd watch a sequel. What do you think? This is a part of the conversation that we stem from. Uh -huh. What do you think made Avatar so successful to begin with? To make it Ooh. one of the highest grossing films? Yeah, uh, it, I think it had a lot of grassroots support. Like, people, if I remember right... The very first week it came out, the weekend, it didn't. It did well, but it didn't do crazy well. But it, it was one of those situations where people saw it and then they said, "You have to watch this." Yeah. And like the next week, it just like blew up. Yeah. Um, and it had to do with the special effects. It was mm -hmm. uh, one of the new versions of a 3D movie. Yeah. Had amazing visual effects. The CGI was is beautiful. Top notch. The Top world shelf. they created is awesome. Yep. Uh, and the story is approachable. People have heard the story before. It's Pocahontas. Well, they've seen Pocahontas. Yeah, they've all seen Pocahontas. So it, it's a it's a story that's dressed up in a different scenario. It's, so it's a sci-fi version it's of Pocahontas. An, it's a approachable story, but it's nothing. It's not a spectacular story. It's not. This people don't go in there for the story. Is that what you're saying? People I, go in I there would for say. I mean, the wow factor was the effects. The immersion was the. It was this world they created and how beautiful it was. Yes. Uh, and how and it, I was told. I remember at the time you have to watch it in 3D. That's uh -huh. what they said. You have to. I didn't, but they said that you have to I because that's the, that's going to be the best experience for it. Yeah, and I, I mean, again, it's it's a story that we've we've seen before, retold in a different way. It's sci-fi, mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit different. Uh, but I don't. I mean, I don't know where they're what the sequels going to be. Yeah, I so feel what do you, like the story do you is kind of complete. The sequels will have the same effect that the first one had. Uh, it might. I mean, I'm not going to rule out that their special effects couldn't, like, blow everything out of the water. Again? I mean, it might. I mean, there's the potential for that to happen. What's the best in this year, in the last calendar year, 12 months, yeah, yeah. what was the best visual effect you've seen in the movie? Ooh, it's a so uh, Mad Max slightly above Star Wars because of because practical, practical effects. Because their emphasis on that. What, what specifically in Star Wars? Do you have a specific scene? Uh, I think of Mazda's Cantina. That whole scene. Like, you walk in and there's that robot walking. The as battle a, scene? No, no, no. Before that. When they first get there. Okay. Um, as they're walking in, there's a robot walking. That's a practical effect. 
Then you get you go inside to the left. There's this big horn guy with mm-hmm. like the the first order spy. That thing's practical. Most of the creatures in Maz's cantinas are all practical effects. The only exception is Maz. So really. you like practical effects? I like good practical effects. Okay. And I felt like all of those were good, and that's part of Star Wars. So too. what do you Avatar? I would not. Put on the practical effects side. It is not. It is visual. It is the opposite of that. So why do you like Avatar so much? Uh, because they had they did CGI so well compared to everything okay, else. Okay, let me rephrase my question. What's the best CGI you've seen in the past twelve months? The best CGI. Yeah. Okay. First thing that comes to mind is Colossus from Deadpool. He was that pretty was good. All CGI. That was legit. Yeah. Uh, I. Andy Circus, General Snoke. Snow. I mean, Snoke was was okay. I didn't think it was like perfect or anything. I don't know how to answer that. Maybe let's come back to it. Let's come back. I need to, to it. think. Of, I need to think of a little bit. So Avatar is making. James Cameron has said he's making four sequels to Avatar, which is obnoxious. I don't, <laughs> Tony's opinion. It's obnoxious. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think they can do anything. I don't know. I guess the first one. It did something that was un- was unexpected. Yeah, I don't think they can replicate that replicate that four more times. So we'll see what happens. Um, Justin's computer is running out of battery, so he's sneaking away. Uh, let's talk about the eSport Olympics Ooh. that the British, the UK is pushing. Uh, well, there's an update on this article that says the UK isn't actually pushing it, but they're welcome to its launch. I will read you part of the article. Um, the UK government is getting into esports, back in a new tournament to run alongside the upcoming Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, simply called the E-Games, the competition builds itself as the pinnacle of competitive gaming and will start with a two-day pop-up event in Rio itself this summer. Future E-Games events will coincide with both Winter and Summer Olympics um, in Tokyo, 20, in the 2018 Olympics and the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Huh. Um, so essentially they're trying to have uh, like nations of esports, like go against each other, like you would in the Olympics. Well, so, so pro gamers would represent their home country. Yeah. Now, how would they decide which games would be on the docket? I assume Dota Two, as it's the biggest yes. league. Um, CS:GO. Most likely, melee would be sick. Dude, melee would be awesome. If melee made it to the Olympic Games. Oh, I just read a fact today. Um, I believe it's melee, Smash Four, and Street Fighter. Yeah. Five are the first games to reach over 1,000 participants in Evo for this year. What? Like already? Yeah. For, for signups? Yeah. Nice. We should go. Let's sign up. Street Fighter Five is huge, and everybody loves Street Fighter. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting that Melee still gets that many attendants, but Melee is growing in popularity. Yeah. Um, Street Fighter would probably be there. Some uh, some fighting game like that, Street Fighter or Capcom, Marvel Capcom or something yeah. like that. Um. I, mean, I feel like that would be the only challenge of putting esports is which games are we gonna put? There's a picture here on the it's on wire dot uh, com yeah dot, dot co dot, dot co dot uk. Uh, it's a Call of Duty championship photo, which is interesting. I did not expect that because there's actually a lot of people in the crowd. They yeah. normally don't have a lot of people. Um, I don't think I see any games listed. Oh, Dota Two Street Fighter is listed. Um, I don't know. I think that'd be cool. That would be easy. I, I assume if we went to Twitch, Twitch and looked at the top. Oh wait, wait, wait! Is it is it that time? Is it time? Is it time for this? It's time. Now, time for our favorite part of the show. Uh, Where is Destiny on Twitch? One, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. It's ten. It broke the top ten. Oh my goodness! Think it just had an update come out. Oh yeah, in April. Because it it has been higher recently. recently. It has been. Which True. hey, you know, props to Destiny. They're they're keeping the community fresh. It's in the top ten. Yeah, we got to give a little bit of respect. I expected it to be down in the thirties by now, but yeah, maybe maybe Ooh. this update did well. Hearthstone would be an interesting say, thing to see it. That would the, be interesting. Olympic e games. I would I would enjoy that. So League of Legends, I'd expect Counter Strike, Dota two, Hearthstone, CS:GO, um, other things that I've said I can't remember right now. Fighting game Street Fighter. Um, I can't think of anything else, but. It'll be interesting to see. I'm excited. That'd be so sick. That would be awesome. That w- it would just give so much validity to esports. 
to the people who are there are just some people who just don't accept that esports can be a thing. And it drives me crazy because Colin Cowherd. I, I, is that a person? He's on ESPN. Or he used to be. Oh. Does he talk about esports and how dumb it is? Yeah. See, it's like how did sports get popular? People enjoyed playing it. Then people enjoyed you watching gotta, people. You shouldn't play. be playing those sports. You gotta be over here tilling the farm. Yeah. We gotta get back to work. You guys are wasting your time playing sports. Exactly. And then Kobe Bryant comes and then retires and then yeah. makes a whole bunch of points. Now look at look man, it's just well, it's like you, you just you, people refuse to see the validity that people actually enjoy watching it. They they just think it's dumb. Yeah. And they just like write it off as some stupid little thing. Have you ever watched that's not have you ever watched someone play video games? Other I have. than that someone that you don't know personally, yeah. watch them play video games for your own enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, All I, the time. It's called YouTube. I don't watch Twitch Literally, very much. Literally it's called YouTube. Uh PewDiePie? But, yeah. Highest the, YouTube the person. Most richest person ever on YouTube. PewDiePie. PewDiePie. First they person I ever subbed to on YouTube was C Nanners for his Minecraft yeah. Let's Play. I, I always watched Husky Starcraft replays. Do you remember that in college? I watched it all the time. I think it started sophomore year. I watched all these different uh, replays. I suited up. And Husky Starcraft, Starcraft he, just, he just does commentary. Oh, he just, like, watches replays. He's not even playing. But I always enjoyed, like, his commentary and watching the, the yeah, games. And he always, like, he always did the, uh, the upper tier people playing, so... It was always like really. Would he explain? Impressive. Yeah, he'd explain the strategies and this is what they're doing. He also had a, a funny series called Bronze League Heroes, which is the lowest league level, okay. and he would just find replays of Bronze League and be like, essentially, these are all the things that they're doing wrong. Let's learn from them. Oh, that's see, that's fun. that's the kind of stuff I need to get into. Smite just became free on PS4. Downloaded it. Haven't played it yet. Smite is free on PS4. Yes. What am I doing right now? You should... Let's go get it. You can download it from your phone onto your PS4. But my PS4 is off, not in rest mode. Another... Yeah, I know. I see that face. He's making that face saying, like, what are you doing with your PS4? <laughs> Tony <laughs> wants to tell me, just always put it in rest mode. What is... Mine's in rest mode right now. Actually, mine might be in rest mode. It saves power. I know. Well, not as much as turning it off. But the best thing about rest mode is when you turn the PS4 back on, it takes you literally back exactly where... You left off. True, true. This is my favorite. You're saying everything that is accurate. Yes. Um, what else are on my notes? You want to talk about my notes? Wow, vanilla, my favorite flavor. <laughs> yeah, I was reading uh, some news this week. I, was, I think it was like uh, on BBC News, which I, I read BBC News all the time. It's like my go-to. Um, yeah. Wow, World of Warcraft, Blizzard. They shut down... Shut it so, down! Um, some of their... Not in my house? It was some gamers had their private servers of Vanilla WoW. Of, of original WoW. Original if you don't know what Vanilla World means. Of Warcraft. Yes, no updates. Not, none of the expansions, I should say. Uh, and I think I read there were like 40,000 users still using Vanilla WoW. And Blizzard shut them down. And their statement was, yes, we understand that part, people in the community want to experience the original game. But we've moved on and essentially suck it up. Uh, Henry Cavill missed his phone call to become Superman because he was playing WoW. He said that on that talk show. Oh. Which is legit. <laughs> That's funny. Free. Add to cart. Uh, so those people no longer can play their vanilla WoW, which is all right by me. I've never played WoW before. Uh, I tried it for people about 10 minutes. Insane I, about it. I had, see, the thing is, I have friends who play WoW. And I understand where they're coming from, but after I played Eve, it ruined every other MMO for me. And then with WoW specifically, I just had people in high school that were my friends that they would blow us off to play WoW. And it just put this really bad taste in my mouth yeah. about WoW specifically. I love Guild Wars. I love uh, like RuneScape. I love I all these other MMOs. Any of those. Yeah. Well, I, like, if, I saw, if I saw pictures, I'd be like, yeah, I know what that game is. But I don't know the gameplay mechanics. Don't know any difference. So, yeah, I I would uh, say I'm pretty I'm pretty experienced with at least some of the older MMOs, and when I played WoW, I just couldn't get into it. It was too much. Hey, go kill ten of these things. Bring them back here. Oh, Yay, fine. experience and gold. And then it was that the entire time. And I couldn't get into the story. Again. The graphics weren't amazing. Yeah, I was like, I I don't know what what part of this is attractive. I couldn't fi I couldn't figure it out. 
I don't know. A bunch buns. of people probably disagree with me, but that's the buns. That's where I'm at. That's what's attractive is the buns. Uh, currently in Hollywood, rights to a live action Pokemon game, no, live action Pokemon movie, is being discussed. So how awesome, how awesome slash awful do you think a live action Pokemon movie would be? Uh, well, I mean today, today's CGI is pretty good. It is pretty good. Uh. I feel like it would be weird. What? Ever since Pokemon 2000, has there been a good Pokemon movie? I have stopped watching it. I don't know. It's always... I've only seen the first one, I think. The first Pokemon. Do. Maybe. I, I, I've never owned them, so... Only... I associate Pokemon movies with their announcement of new legendary Pokemon that you can get at GameStop. So I'm like, I hate this. Not that Pokemon movies are bad, it's just that's all I see. Um, a live action Pokemon, you have to get all the characters right. You yeah, have to get a sure. blind man to play Brock. His eyes are never open. <laughs> You're gonna have Misty there? Or Ash? Would it just be Is it gonna be a reboot? Is it gonna be something completely new? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a character you've never seen before, not Ash. Pikachu gonna be there? I mean I don't how feel do like make, you can have it without Pikachu. How do you make anime into real life characters without doing them injustice? I'm not sure. I feel like it's kind of risky. I, w I would be okay with them doing, like, an animated version. You know, like, a new animated movie. And if they use, like, computer-generated instead of just color, like, uh, drawing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be cool with that. But, I don't know. That's... It just seems risky. You don't have the PlayStation app on your phone? Oh, my gosh, Tony. I do. Why don't you just do that? Because this was the first thing I saw. I'm trying to get the smite right now, but I forgot my password. So now you I'm. You go about doing things the hardest way. Every time. Um, I'm almost out of notes. Well, then we need to get on to our final topic or our main topic of discussion oh, today. Oh, I got one more. Okay. Uh, we talked about this last week, but it has been confirmed that Spider-Man: Homecoming is the next movie. And although a contract has not been signed, it is rumored that Iron Man will be in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Which makes sense, because Homecoming, the comic, is him just coming out of the Secret Wars, and he meets, like, the Avengers are there, and it's him coming home to Aunt May and uh, Mary Jane. But I don't... Like I said, like we said last time, the only villain in Homecoming is a mugger. Which I assume is, like, a flashback to Uncle Ben. Which so, we don't need to see Uncle Ben die again. Right. Well, I don't know. He says the most influential thing of Spider-Man... So, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, I think, will be fine. I don't know. I think Tom Holland, uh, there was an interview with Robert Downey Jr. on Jimmy Kimmel. He said he was really impressed with Tom Holland. He thinks he does really well as Spider-Man. So, I'm excited for it. I don't think they've announced uh, a release date yet. They just announced that Homecoming is what it's called. So, on to our main topic called We Have Three Trailers. Let's talk about them. Alright, I'm done with this stupid thing. Just use your phone. It'll ask me for my password. Why don't you have these things saved? I've never done it with my laptop before. Why is it not saved on your phone? Because I just changed my password. You missed it. This is too <laughs> much this is too much criticism. Stop watching me. You'd like a backseat driver right now. Um so three trailers have look, come out. Look, sign in. Uh. <laughs> oh, don't don't show me. <laughs> I can't do it now. Three trailers have came out in the past week. Doctor Strange. Yes. The Suicide Squad Blitz trailer, a new one. Mm hmm And uh, Rogue One trailer. Uh, I know this. I think the shortest one was Doctor Strange trailer, so we can talk about that for a second. Uh, still excited for this movie. Uh, there was a review I said that said it gave. Uh, Inception, a run for its money and visual effects. I'm like, no. And the, and they said in reality, bending the game Inception, a run for its money. I'm like, I don't think so. Cause it's just all CGI. But I was thinking, Benedict Cumberbatch. I don't like. I like him, and I think he'll do well. I just don't think he looks that much like Doctor Strange, Stephen Strange. Uh, however, he does have the gray hair on the sides. Maybe it's just because he's all hairy for most of the movie. Um, the Ancient One is 
female, although I don't think they referred to her as a spe specific gender, but I think they referred to her like as a her once. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I think this is the first Marvel movie where they kind of go out onto like a limb with like mysticism. So like everything we've seen in Marvel so far, like yeah, there's the Infinity Gems, yeah, there's like scrolls, and there's like the scroll invasion and things like that, but so far, it's just been like people with superpowers doing things. Uh, I guess you see aliens in Guardians of the Galaxy, but so far, I have not seen, or there's not really been any mysticism other than like Daredevil season two at the very end. Um, but with this one, it looks like it's all mysticism all the time, which will be interesting. There'll be definitely uh, visual effects consistently throughout the movie, so we'll see what's happening. But. That's my quick review of Doctor Strange. What were your first impressions? Well, you know, I don't really know much about Doctor Strange, besides what we covered in our Doctor Strange episode. Um, I thought it looked like a new uh, type of character that we've not seen before, which made me excited. There's a lot of, it seems to be like there's a lot of mystery involved uh, with the character. At least for me, I, I was like, who is this character? Why is he, like, why... There weren't, weren't any, like, action scenes in the trailer. So, like, usually I th when I think of superhero movie, I think of, like, Captain America or Iron Man, and there's always, like, beating up somebody in there. Mm -hmm. And his was more, like, in the mind. Like, all the action part of it was, like, mind-bending situations. And, like, we see one character shifting the terrain around in this, like, Inception-esque type way. Uh -huh. by, like, the, the ground sh sh shifting and shaking and... Uh, we see him getting trained by some super zen master chick. The ancient one. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, my first impression is I want to see it. Like, I want to see more because uh, it, it seems different. And I, I like the idea that Marvel can continue to introduce these new characters who are different. Because mm -hmm. I thought at first, and I hear this argument sometimes, that all these movies that Marvel and DC keeps coming out with, like, how many superhero movies can they do and it still be entertaining? Mm-hmm. Well, when they, when they introduce these characters that are distinctly different, I think they can do it for quite some time because they have enough characters that have different stories. They're not the same. Right. So Marvel I, has a, a really good track record of having different heroes. Yeah. Right? At least the main ones. Like, obviously, Iron Man is completely different from, like, Doctor Strange. Yeah. For sure. And, like, powers-wise. Other than, like, the personalities are pretty similar. Um, Spider-Man is completely different from Captain America. Hulk is different from Black Widow. Mm -hmm. So it's like... So you can have all these different videos lined up, and as long as they're not the same type of movie over and over again, uh, people will keep enjoying it, people will keep going to it. <clears throat> um, but I think instead of like a lot of three-dimensional fighting, which is what we've seen so far, there's going to be a many-dimensional fighting. So they're going to be fighting with their minds, they're going to be fighting not with their fists, they'll be fighting in different dimensions with different powers... It looks like he was pushed through a couple of dimensions, pushed through space and time when he was fighting somebody. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. To see. I, I'm just, I'm just excited because it's, it's so different, and it seems like now they're pulling from characters who are more on the fringe of the Marvel universe, or uh -huh. ones that I just, I don't have any experience with. Like growing up as a kid, Iron Man had a cartoon, Spider Man had a cartoon. Um, I mean, the Justice League was a cartoon. Like I know all these main characters. Like I've been introduced to them. I'm excited now that it's shifted mm -hmm. to now these newer characters. Like Ant-Man, like I had literally never seen Ant-Man before. Not that I liked that movie that much. Like it was good. It was all right. I'm glad I saw it. But it's a new character, and I'm excited that it's a new that their new characters coming. Ant-Man's interesting. I think Hank Pym is more of an interesting character than Ant-Man himself. You think so? Yeah. Why? He's just like he's in the forefront of technology. He's been there for a long time. He does all these things. Um Whereas Ant-Man is just like, well, I mean, Ant-Man becomes giant man every once in a while. He's remembered to do that in Captain America Civil War. Um, but I don't think, uh, Ant-Man's not really that entertaining. Like, as, like, the superhero aspect, I think his, 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 him, his yeah. alter ego is more entertaining. He's, he's funny. At least he is in the movie. Which is my own experience with it. But, um, I mean, do you, are there Paul any... Paul Rudd is not Hank Pym. Oh, Hank Pym is the Michael older guy. That makes sense. Um, are there any other characters that you actually prefer them as their alter ego? 
as opposed to their superhero form. <laughs> Um, Reed Richards maybe, but they're almost the exact same person. Uh, not really. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I just don't think Ant Man like the hero power, the hero side is that entertaining. You ready to talk about Rogue One? Oh, can you stop focusing oh, on this mic for a second? I'm almost there. I, I, da- I bought it now for free. You have to download it to your not yeah. in safe mode. Well, I don't think it's in safe mode. Or but not in rest mode PS4. We'll find out. That was the most difficult I've ever had typing in anywhere. So Rogue One. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you've not seen the trailer, pause this right now. Watch the trailer. And then we'll talk. So now you're back, hopefully. And uh, well, You're really excited. Please. I am. I'm like... More excited than I thought I'd be. Before the trailer, I was like, Rogue One, it'll be good. But really, episode 8. It had the opposite effect on me. Which is normal for us, I'd say. Having opposite effects on Not really. We were both excited for Doctor Strange. That's true. But like, I had high expectations for Rogue One, and now that I've seen it, I'm just like, meh. I'll go without it. We'll talk about my... Reservations after you talk about how awesome you think it's going to be. Well, uh, I don't know how awesome the movie's going to be because I, I, I haven't seen it yet, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the director very well, so I don't have a lot of experience with that. But I'm excited about the feeling I got from the trailer, specifically. Uh, it did not feel like a Star Wars movie. And that is why I'm excited. It felt distinctly different than like any trailer I've seen Force Awakens, or any of the prequels or original trilogy I've seen, this feels different, and I like that. Can you expand on that? Yeah. Uh, there, there were no lightsabers in the trailer. There was... Uh, I love the music in it. It was in a... They cha- they shifted uh, the music into a minor key mm-hmm. towards the end, and they had this, this bass coming through that really hinted towards dark. This is going to be a darker take on things. And from what I've read... It's supposed to be filmed more like a war movie or like a heist war movie, like the Dirty Dozen or something like that, uh, than it is the classic hero Star Wars, let's save the galaxy situation. Uh, and I think we can already see that with the main character. Right? She's not a perfect character. She's not a, necessarily even a good character. We don't, from the trailer, we don't know if she's going to turn bad or not because it kind of leaves it with a question hanging, which is what will you become? And she's sitting there in Imperial gear. Now, that yeah, might be her sneaking into the Death Star and using that. Or it could be her. she's turned to the dark side, or the bad side, you know, become an enemy. We don't know. Uh, and in all of it, I mean, she's a rebel, and she it lists off all the terrible things she's done, or the, the things she's done against the Empire. I don't know. They're all against the law. We've seen all that. So it just seems like a different approach to Star Wars. Uh, from a From a an angle we haven't seen before, which is the nitty-gritty part of the Rebellion. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I think women in Star Wars have a, have a distinct disadvantage when it comes to incognito subvert operations. How can, how can a woman infiltrate the Death Star? Easy. Put on Stormtrooper armor. Yeah, but even... There's probably no women restrooms on the Death Star. I, I'm sure they can hold it until it's over. <laughs> What do you mean until it's over? The Death Star is the size of a moon. It's true. What happens if you have to go to the core? You can't just walk down the hallway and be there in five minutes. I mean, guy restrooms have stalls, too, so I feel like it'd be pretty easy. I'm just saying that's a dumb reason for her not to be able to sneak in. (laughs) It's not, though, because how often it's going to be so, like, so Stormtroopers in um, Episode 4, they're all, when does the Clone War end? To where they're no longer clones anymore. Uh, from what I understand, by the original trilogy, the stormtroopers are all supposed to be non-clones. Because in Star Wars Rebels, which is a precursor to Episode Four, uh, the clones that they meet, which are the main characters from the Clone Wars cartoon, all are like in their fifties and sixties and have gray hair and are fat. So they're like all retired. women in Star Wars stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Princess Leia, Rey, Kenobi, Rey Kenobi. Yeah, the fact that you can list how many women there are in Star Wars on, like, two hands. Mara Jade. 
Is that in a film? Philip DeFort, no. Are those in film? She's in the books. Yeah. Mom Mothma is. Mom Mothma is. Yeah, she's the general in the thing. In the trailer. Yep. Well, that's like that's why, five women. And that's why I'm I'm okay with them making another main character a female. And that's been a lot of controversy. They're like, oh yeah, another female lead. We haven't seen that before. Okay, let's list all the, the guy main characters in Star Wars. Oh, wait, all of them but Rey. And I actually don't care that she's a woman and that she's a lead. I think that's cool. However, my first impression of the trailer was not a good one. Um, I I felt very Hunger Games-esque when I watched it. Hmm. It's like, oh, there's this girl that's around, surrounded around this girl, and oh, she's rebelling. Oh, I rebel. Oh, where have I heard that before? Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> I'm sick of that. I'm sick of young teenage girls rebelling all the time. In movies. Okay. In blockbusters. Um, they didn't show anything of her, of that male counterpart, her, like, sidekick. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be a big part of the movie. Like, he's, like, like, it's not going to be just about the girl. There's always, there's always two people. Well, it's only one trailer. I know, mean, but they, like, completely glossed over him. Like, you see him every once in a while, but he could just be a, an extra if that's all the information we got. Is that he's just an extra. I like, mean, I wouldn't want them to put everything in the trailer. I mean, I feel like you're just being overly critical of what we've seen. Because she's not even in it the whole time. I mean, she's in it the majority of the time. I mean, it's distinctly, the trailer's but distinctly about her. We see Forrest Whitaker. We see the dude with the uh, wooden katana thing. Uh, I mean, we see I the space scene. I mean, as a whole, yeah. I mean, she's she's definitely... No, I think that's just a pole. I don't think it's a katana. Oh, you don't think it's a katana? I think no. it's a staff. It might be. I'm sure it is. I mean, you see other people, but the trailer's distinctly about her. Yeah. She's the main character. That makes sense. I feel like the male supporting character is just glossed over. Like, the fact that they just wanted to show that they have a woman mm-hmm. as the main character. Okay. And, like, look at how awesome we're doing because we have a woman. Like, I don't have a problem that she's a woman mm-hmm. and the main character. It's just... I'm tired of seeing teenage girls rebel against something. Because mm. Ray didn't do that. No. Ray was awesome. Ray was awesome. Ray was just like... I love Ray. She was in the situation and she had to do it. Yeah. She's not like, oh, I'm I'm a teenager and I'm trouble. She didn't, I'm gonna rebel. She didn't her feel her. like she had anything to prove. I didn't feel like yeah. that. Ray didn't. Like, Luke didn't. Necessarily. No. But like, I'm comparing this girl, whatever her name is, to Katniss. To Katniss, yeah. And I'm like, I've seen this. I've seen this four movies like, over. Like, this just ended. Yeah. I mean, I, and they're making prequels. I, I mean, I feel like Star Wars is distinct from Hunger Games in a lot of ways, especially the story. I didn't finish the Hunger Games series because when I watched part one of the last installment, I hated it. And I was like, I don't want to watch the last one. So. Yeah, but on a whole, it's there's a small faction going up against this giant empire, a woman leading the charge. A young girl, a young teenage girl is leading this rebellion charge. That's what I got from this trailer. So I mean, she's not leading the rebellion, though. Well, she's she's just her. she's leading. She's leading from a, what we see. The mm-hmm. the part that we see, she's the leader of it. Maybe not the leader, right, but she's but, the main focus. But if you're comparing her to Katniss, Katniss is the leader and the flag that the District Thirteen waves she's, for the rebellion. Katniss isn't a leader. Well, she's not the leader, but they use her as like the person. She's like the poster child yeah. of the rebellion. This is a mission. Covert mission, and she's the leader of it, or yeah, she's but the main character. All we've of it. seen so far, and she's the main character. She's the from our point, our perspective, she's the forefront. True, which is similar. I'm I just, not, I just think their positions are different, and in, in within the story, like there's this whole part of propaganda with Katniss that is probably. I'm not, not comparing Rogue One to Hunger Games. I'm just saying That's exactly what in this trailer. No, I'm saying in this trailer, this girl, I'm comparing to Katniss because I've seen it so many times before. That there's this girl, there's this young girl that's rebelling against the Empire. And it, while it's a different Empire, empire while it's a different whatever, yeah. it's essentially the same once you break it down. If well, you break you... it down into big enough chunks, it's there's this teenage girl. She even says in the trailer, I rebel. Like, yeah, yeah I get it. Cut it out. Do something useful. So would you? Because re- it sounds like the Rebellion is even rebuking her for doing this. It's like, she, it's like, what is her name? Jim. Jim? Jis. Jim. Jim Arsa? Jay. J Arsa something. Jay. I think it's Jim. Jay is going around and it's like she's not she doesn't have a purpose. 
Like, she's just kind of rebelled to rebel, and she's using the rebellion as a cause to do whatever she wants. Is essentially Because it sounds like she's being rebuked by the rebellion at the very beginning. It does sound that. When it has the list of things, it's like, mm-hmm. you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. Don't do this anymore. And she's like, I'm rebelling. This is what I thought I was supposed to do. Where she has that, like, sarcastic girl attitude mm-hmm. that all teenage girls have. I compare that to Katniss, because I've seen it so many times from Katniss. I can't compare Ray to anything other than, like, Luke Skywalker, which people have done. Yeah. But, I mean, when you're from the Kenobi family and you're trained well, by Kenobi, When you're a Skywalker. You know, you know, I mean, of, speaking, of, Ray is a Kenobi speaking of Luke Skywalker, uh, common theory is that Jyn Arsa is Ray's mother. Yeah. And that she and Luke get it on at some point. And have Ray, and that's why they did this this movie before episode eight. Uh, I don't know how how old it is, but the article I read said that it would make sense. She would have she would have to have the child when when she's in her forties, uh, which is a little bit late. But there's nothing to say that in Star Wars that's going to be a huge issue. How old was and Luke when Darth Vader died? Do you know? When, take? when Darth Vader died? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Empire. I want to say he was okay. in his Jedi early twenties. Really? Yeah, because I think he's 18 or 17, 17 or 18, 18 in A New Hope. And then it's three years after that. Yeah, I believe so. so. Early 20s. And this J girl is around the same age. Yeah. 17 or 18. Yeah, so she's, actually, she'd be like a little, looks like she's a little bit older than him. I, I It's hard, it's hard for me to tell in a story what age they are unless they express it. Because I know they usually, a lot of times they have actors play younger than they yeah. are. And so I see them, and I'm like, my age star tells me that you're like 25, but you're coming, you're trying to be a character who's 16, so I'm like, real confused. Like Katniss. She's supposed to be younger than that, but... I didn't, my, I didn't write any notes <laughs> down for these trailers, I should have, because there are a lot of thoughts about them. I'm yeah, them. well, I can, <clears throat> I I mean, I think we disagree on, on that. I just, what would you rather have as the main character for this story? I'm, I'm perfectly, 100% okay with a girl. I just don't need someone to be... You don't like a rebellious character yeah only because i don't like a rebellious young female girl because i've seen it in cat i've seen it in hunger games yeah if, it, if she was like older and she was even if she was rebellious against the empire not so much against the rebellion yeah i would be like that's cool um but i also like this trailer left a bad taste in my mouth and i've watched it twice now i watched <laughs> it once with you and then this once when it first came out i was like i'm getting sick of star wars movies my, my heart stopped for a second. I know. I mean, I should have like true. Like, I mean, so I mean, I can understand that that perspective because I I'm tired of dystopian movies. movies. Yeah, because there's been so many dystopian movies, and I'm not tired of superhero movies, but I'm getting more picky with them. Mm-hmm. But like episodes four through six, fantastic, and obviously those came out before my time, mm-hmm. and then one through three came out when we were and kids. then we had like 10 years later and then yeah. you had other movies come out but now it's not episode 7 through 9 mm-hmm. it's episode 7 through 9 plus three other movies in between that's six movies we have so you're so okay. essentially the first expansion past the episodes you already don't like the anthologies that they're coming out with you don't like this idea are you, are you against the idea of it or is no. it just this one even, doesn't sound like what even you want? before the trailer I'm like this is cool I'm excited for Mm-hmm. I want to see this. And then I saw the trailer, and I was like, this is too much Star Wars. Like, hmm. I've had my fill. Like, Battlefront just came out. Um, well, it came out in November, but... Yeah. I've just... That's a lot of Star Wars. Like, once a year? Because that's... I mean, that's yeah. the track right now, is once a year. There'll be... After, like... after I wait, waited 30 years, 40 mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. for seven episodes, mm-hmm. now in the span of six years, I mean, it's six more. Yeah. They've in- increased it incredibly. Now, yeah. do you feel that way about Marvel movies? Because I, I know guess. you're you're a bigger fan of Marvel and comics than you are of Star Wars. I do. But for me, it's the opposite. I'm no. it'll be Star Wars number one. I know for me. So, because I know there are people with that perspective on Marvel movies. Like my brother, tired of Marvel. Movies. He's like tired him. of Marvel. Movies. He's like done. He's like after the first wave, he was like, "This is too much." I don't blame him. And I, I can understand that. I can understand your perspective. I understand that perspective. Um. I'll have to see another trailer and see what happens, but, like, yeah. this first trailer, I just wasn't, like, I saw the AT-ATs, and I was like, I know how, these, these can be defeated, like, these aren't a threat anymore. There was, there's a good scene of them putting the dish into the Death Star, and, like, wow, yeah. that thing's huge. It is huge. Although, they have already done that in episode three. 
And they never episode D, they're showing the Death Star, and the dish is already in the Death Star. Well, they show the plans for the Death no, Star. No, they're building the Death Star in episode three. And then the the it's like the outer rim of the of the Death Star, and the dish is already in it. Oh, doesn't it just have like the? It looks like the core of the gun is already, or the of the w- laser weapon is in place. There, yeah, I remember it now. It's been a while since I've seen yeah. episode three. So I guess they took the dish out and then put the encasing around the Death mm-hmm. Star, and then put the dish back in. I suppose so. I, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like all I can say is that it left not a bad taste in my mouth, but like a like water after it's after it's been left out overnight. Mm. Like, it's not fresh anymore, it's like... Interesting. It's more like an intermission between the Ray <laughs> Kenobi story. Well, uh, you know, what I... There's a lot of questions that aren't answered, obviously, by the trailer, which I always like it if a trailer leaves you with a lot of questions. I kind of want to know who the the, bat, the the white... The white guy? Admiral... Who, is he supposed to be Tarkin? Is he supposed to be somebody else? Like, I don't think he's supposed to be Tarkin, from what I can tell. In the in the Star Wars universe, the only character in the Empire who wears that a white Admiral's outfit like that is Admiral Thrawn, who is in the series that is probably one of the most popular and highest critically acclaimed uh, Admiral Thrawn, or the Thrawn series trilogy by Timothy Zahn, uh, which they thought... They actually talked with Timothy Zahn before they decided to nix the canon. They actually met with Kathleen Kennedy, from what I understand, met with Timothy Zahn about his books. Tama. Yeah. You, you're saying a lot of names right now? Yeah, I'm throwing out a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm just literally so confused. Yeah. Books? Books. To break it down. Old canon. We're talking about Star Wars books. Yeah. Comics? Books. Books. Books, books. There's a trilogy of books. Yes. There was an empire, a galactic empire general? Named Thrawn? Yeah. That was a bad guy. After episode six. Was it a bad guy? Yeah. And he did bad things. He, yes. That, that, that's what bad guys do. Continue. Uh, well, let's do it. Well. So, I mean, he he was, to Star Wars fans who are hardcore and read a lot of the books, many people enjoy Admiral Thrawn as the bad guy. What did he do? Uh, he was, he was kind of like the mastermind kind of bad guy, um, and he changed the Empire... The Imper- it was the Imperial Revenant, is what they called it. But he, he was the like... Revenant? The Revenant? The Remnant? Oh. Remnant, not The Revenant, which is a great movie. Space Bears. Space Bears. Uh, check out that episode, listeners, if you haven't already. The Revenant uh, and Space Bears? Revenant and Space Bears. There we go. Um, now I lost my train of thought. He, he was like more open to creative <laughs> ideas. He what he didn't like he wasn't like Darth Vader where it's like oh you did something wrong let me choke you to death. Yeah. Uh, he was at, he was like more collaborative in how he did things, but he was like a mastermind. Like he, he was like super intelligent, uh, and so he was like a bad guy. And he had a white admiral outfit, which is why some people think that this character might be loosely based off of Admiral Thrawn. But twenty years in the future, yeah. Present, so past, just like based past? essentially. It, it would have earlier. been it would have been like probably thirty, maybe twenty twenty five years before mm. in the old canon he appeared as the main admiral. I mean, the, the idea is that he'd be loosely based off the character. Like maybe his character is like is super intelligent, gonna be kind of like this collaborative person. He may even be called Thrawn for all we know, but we don't know. But that's I mean, just the idea. Get me excited for this movie. Uh. So I, I don't know how I can at this point. Uh, there's, there's like a ninja dude who uses a uh, staff. That looks that's cool. interesting. How? Also, I, Forrest Whitaker is in this movie. Yeah, that's what? weird. I know. I was like, this is the weirdest casting I've ever seen. But Why is he here? The more I watch it, I'm like, you know, maybe... I feel like he's going to be like a mentor. Is his career so far down the drain that he, they think people won't recognize him? Because Star Wars is notorious for hiring people that aren't no, that Yeah. They, they make people's careers. Yeah. Like Harrison Ford? Yeah. No, but he was he was the hired to read the scripts, and he did so well that George Lucas was like, you know what? Actually, I want you to be in the movie because yeah. he was just a, a script re- reader for like Luke's audition, I think. Mm-hmm. And they liked him so much that they picked him up. And like uh, her, uh, Mark Hamill, nothing right. before nothing. that. So is Forrest Whitaker? Have they been banking that Forrest Whitaker is so non popular now that they're just like nobody's going to recognize you, or they're just like we're going to reach out and get somebody that has done things before? I don't know. I mean, I think it was weird to see him. I mean, Forrest Whitaker was in uh, the Butler last year, and they got a lot of critical acclaim. Well, Forrest Whitaker is a good actor, and he's done a lot of things. Um, yeah, but it was weird seeing you know, a, a well-known actor. 
The martial arts guy is sweet, and he's, he's also a well-known cool. martial arts actor. I can't remember his name, though. Is he a man? No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, but I don't think so. He's normally... Well, I think in this movie, he's a blind martial arts guy. Yeah. But I don't understand, because only, the only time uh, a melee weapon is good against a stormtrooper that has a, a laser rifle right. is a, a weapon a that can reflect it back. Right. So why is he beating up three stormtroopers? Like, I don't know. Where's the other battalion of guys that just shoot him down? Yeah, I wonder that too. Because I know stormtroopers are notoriously ineffective, but seriously, a guy with a wooden stick can take you down? You would, I mean, a blind guy? <laughs> a blind guy with a wooden stick? I mean, maybe he's a martial arts master. He might be a Jedi. So there's some rumors out there that he's a blind Jedi. Is this a... Do you think this is the Ocean's Eleven of uh, Star Wars? Um, I think it's more like the Dirty Dozen. Have you seen the Dirty Dozen? No. It's a, it's a World War II movie where they sneak in and steal... So They, like, crash a Nazi general party and, like capture a bunch of people. And it's like behind enemy lines. I feel like it's going to be more like that. Ocean's Eleven is more like suave and let me sneak in and get all these plans in order. Yeah. And Dirty Dozen is more like we're going to infiltrate this place. A few of us are sneaking in undercover but then it ends up with guns blazing. So who do you think is going to be on this team? team? Infiltration team. Jake? And yeah. that guy that we don't know anything about. Just, although yeah. Uh, he's martial good. arts dude. I think there's a picture that we've seen a thousand times of Jis or Jen Arsa, and then everybody behind her, and they're the like sitting on picture? yeah the firefly picture. Uh, we've seen that picture, and I'm sure I think that's the team. That's what my guess is. Uh, Diego Luna, <clears throat> Donnie Yen. It is it, man. I was wrong. Yeah, I thought I recognized him. Yeah, Donnie and awesome. I know you said so. In the trailer, there's the guy who stands next to Mon Mothma. Uh, I think it's the guy reading all the things that she does wrong. Uh, for, there's rumors that, or there's, uh, I guess, theories that he's going to be Poe Dameron's dad. And some people, that's another theory that maybe J Jis and, or Jay and that dude are going to be Poe's parents. So there's that too. I don't know what to think of Poe. Alan Tudyk is the robot. He oh. is from Firefly. He is from Firefly. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is doing, I think he's the general. I think he is the admiral, dude. Um, I'm trying to find this picture, but I can give up. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's... So get me excited. Uh, Try to get me excited. Star Wars. Blah. Not quite there. I I mean, I, I don't feel like I can at this point. What? You're already so negative against it. Not, I'm not so negative against it. I just said I have a you don't like stale to water taste in my mouth. That's not like no. I ate roadkill. I don't know. I just... I, I mean, I've already said all the reasons why I'm excited for it. Uh... It's just going to be different. What do you think about the AT-ATs? Uh, I didn't think that they looked that great. <clears throat> I think the CGI was a little rough. It looked... <clears throat> it didn't look like a, you know, low-budget film, but it did not look as good as the CGI from Force Awakens. I think it, they're still going to be... From what I've read, like, don't... I read an article saying, like, don't forget about it. They can, they're still going to polish it. They're not in the final stages yeah. of production yet. Do you think they're going to fight these AT-ATs or run away from them? I think they're going to all die from them. Just kidding. I think we're going to fight them. But Do you think everyone's going to die at the end of this film? No. I think somebody might. I bet the droid will. It's Someone has to Dude, die. Star Wars is always like fat guys. Or... How, uh... That's true. You know, like Porkins. Really only Porkins. How, uh... <laughs> so you think they're going to sneak in... Well, doesn't everybody in episode four when they when Leia has a plan that she's returning to the rebellion? Doesn't everybody on that ship die and that she's the only one that's captured? Uh, no. Well, Captain Antilles dies, and then everybody else gets captured. We don't know what happens to them. And then Princess Leia can we gets captured. Death? We can assume or work incarceration, labor probably labor camps. I don't. I mean, like there's like the line of guards with their hands on their helmets, and they're like walking out oh, yeah. with the long helmets. Uh, so. I'm assuming, I mean, Captain Antilles dies, we hear his neck crack by Darth Vader's. So, the, man, I, I'm having allergy things right now, because I can like, barely breathe. because <sighs> you're so excited. I know, you got me all worked up. Um, so, do you think everyone's going to make it out of this alive? Like, uh, well, that's that's the question. I mean, they have the freedom right now, because we they, none of these characters have to connect with anybody else. Like, Star Wars is really famous for, like, making people in each other's lineage, and it's always, like, this person's related to this person, who's related to this person. But they don't have to do that. These could be all fresh characters, and they could all die at the end of this movie. That's exciting. 
That would be so different. I'd be okay. I like a good death ending. And I would be okay. Like, I know there's a lot of theories and rumors that, you know, just Jen is like Poe's parents, or maybe it's Ray's parents. But you know what? I'm oh, fine with brother and sister. And I'd be okay all with Kenobis. them all not being related whatsoever. These are fresh characters. And I'm okay with Ray not having any parents that we know, which we talked about before. I, I don't awesome. think it's going to happen because it's Star Wars she's and it's the story of guy. the Skywalkers. I'm guessing she's a Skywalker. But. She's such a strong guy. Oh, I know. But it's possible. I mean, she could have been fathered by the Force like Anakin was. For all we know. Is that right? I don't know. Metachlorians. Ugh. It's the only thing that's not in canon that's in the movies. They changed that. It's out of canon now. Oh, Metachlorians? Yeah, Metachlorians are that's out. Nice. I know, because I hated that. It took it took the mystery away, it made it science. You want to talk about Suicide Squad? Suicide Squad Blitz trailer, sure, real quick. Uh, this one showed well. This is a new trailer. This showed a lot more comedy than the previous one. I thought. Yeah. When I first watched it, how many of these things do you think were the reshoots, or how much do you think was part of the original script? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, maybe Before some... that, I want to talk I about know, really. Uh, when the first Suicide Tra- Squad trailer came out, people were complaining that Harley Quinn was too over-sexualized because she bent down and you got a picture of her butt. This one, yeah, she's half-naked. Yeah, she's like wearing underwear. And I haven't seen... I haven't, I haven't looked up. I haven't seen any outrage about it. But like, it's highly... It's more sexualized there than it was in the first trailer. Do you think the directors and the producers are just like, yeah, this is Harley Quinn. She's gonna look like this. I mean, isn't that... I don't know Harley Quinn's character. So... I mean, if that's her character, then that's what she does. She does whatever she wants from what we I, talk, I can tell. She's, like, schizophrenic, right? No. We talked about it beforehand. Um, her first character origin was in the Batman animated series. Hmm. Um, and then after that, she was then put into the comics. So she wasn't originally a comic character. She was an animated series character. Oh, yeah. And that series, she has, like, a jester, a outfit. jester outfit, and she has, like, leggings on, but also a skirt. Hmm. But I believe ever since then, she's been hypersexualized. Like, all the Batman Arkham games... Yeah. Um... She, like, like wearing fishnet leggings, I think, and a super short, short skirt and, like, a bra and things like that. Yeah. So I've only ever, like, the fact that she's hypersexualized, I'm just like, yeah, that's her. Like, she was a, oh, she was originally a psychologist. Yeah. And she was, um, that was a hog. That was a couple of hogs. Um, and she was, she was a prison psychologist and she was taking notes on the Joker. And the Joker essentially convinced her to go crazy, to fall in love with him. So she quit her job as that and became Harley Quinn. Um, and then they like started dating or whatever. So she's totally in love with the Joker. Um, so she's a super smart person. She was a, a psychologist. She did all this stuff. She was like th- a psychological therapist. Mm-hmm. She did all this, and that's not an easy job to do. So she knew a whole bunch. But then she went crazy. Hmm. So people are like, she's super smart. Why is she also sexual? Like... I don't know. It's just uh, I mean, Hollywood. I, I wasn't a. I mean, I mean that's what media does to girls, and I don't think is. I don't think it's right, and I, I think that's why Ray was so cool because I don't think Ray was sexualized at all in the film. Uh, but that's like what that's what Hollywood does. They just take girls and they throw them out there and they say let's make them super sexual. And probably, but I've also I've seen Harley Quinn more sexualized than I have non sexualized. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, in the trailers. I've seen, not even in the trailers, in, but, uh, in the, history. In our like, series, in yeah. comics, in movies, in TV shows, in whatever, I've seen her more as, a, like, she is obviously a crazy person, but she also has a sexuality to her that I have, I've seen more of that sexuality than I have of not, not the sexuality. So the fact, in, in general, that people are like, why wow, is she so sexual? I'm like, because that's her character. I mean, that seems to be her evolution of her character, is that's what she's become. So, I mean, I don't think any of the complaints are going to do anything. No. It, the internet just like loves just reacting. That's why we do Twitter. It's like you make one choice. Guess what? Half the world thinks it's dumb. You make a different choice. Guess what? There's always gonna be people who complain. The same thing with the whole controversy about Rogue One and her being a female. Like people were saying, oh, another white girl. She's gonna be in the lead now. How dumb is that? Why can't we have a guy? Why can't we have a black girl? Why can't we have like all these things? It's like no matter who you pick, it's gonna be controversial. Somebody's gonna be not okay with it. They would pick a white guy. Which is like the classic hero. The last right? black girl lead I can think of in a movie was The Princess and the Frog. That's animated. Yeah, no, I know. I was actually hoping that they would make her a black lead, but. That'd be sick. I know. I was like, Star Wars in 
Episode 7, they broke a lot of boundaries, right? Like, they did... Ray is the main character. Finn. Finn and Poe. Poe's... Poe's... Uh, Latin. He's from Latin America. Yes. Uh, I don't know his name. Who? His real name? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's Poe. Yeah. <laughs> Poe Dameron. Uh, yeah, so... He's also Apocalypse in X-Men Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his name. I should know, but I can't. I apologize. Um, well, I was, I mean, I was secretly hoping that that would be the case. But that it was a, a black lead. Black female lead. Black female lead. And, you know, maybe Star Wars will. They've got plenty. Of, they said they're making ten more movies, so they're going to have plenty of chances here. Oh. No. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I think the reason I'm so burnt out on Star Wars mm -hmm. is because it's a Skywalker story. Mm. So, like... And comparing it to Marvel, like, okay, it's a start episode one through seven. Yeah. Skywalker all the way through. Uh, except for the Kenobi thing with Rey. Which um, she's a Skywalker, not a Kenobi. We, we all know. Um, but, like, with Marvel, it's like, there's Iron Man movies, there's Captain America movies, there's Hulk movies, there's Thor movies, there's Ant Man movies, there's Doctor Strange movies, there's Darede Deadpool, Daredevil. Right. These are all different characters. There's diversity to it. For sure. So I think I'm just tired of the Skywalker story. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, that, I, mean I, don't I don't know how much, from what you said earlier, it sounds like you, uh, you're you tired of the rebellious teenager thing. Uh, uh, I understand true. that, but, I mean, the the ten that they've announced, only two more of them, only two of those are going to be Skywalker stories, at least from what we can tell. Right. Because um, you know, they said the episodes, or the Skywalker, story of the Skywalkers, oh, but the, the rest of them, they have the episodes. Uh, the rest of them are going to be whatever. I mean, well, all we know is Rogue One and Han Solo right Han Solo. now. Rumors of Obi Wan series for between four and, so cool. four and three and four in the desert. Whatever he does for that fifteen years. He doesn't have to be in the desert the whole time. I know. Well, that's that's what I'm excited. What do you, what the heck does he do? I'm guessing he like tries to go save other. He goes Jedi's. and births somebody that then becomes Rey's mother. Oh We've goodness. talked about this. We have talked about this. So maybe that'll give us some. Uh, I mean, we'll know before then probably. I'm guessing an 8. We'll, I don't know how we'll I got back to here. But Suicide Squad trailer. It's because Star Wars. What did man. you think? Uh, what did was, you watch? Do you think it was funny? I thought it was... Oh, you were confused. Tell me about your confusion. You said, so is this a Joker and Batman movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know... I, I didn't know if Joker was part of the Suicide Squad. I assumed he was. But then in this movie, it made him sound like he was the bad guy that the Suicide Squad was after. But then Batman showed up? So is this a Batman versus Joker movie Let me with break the Suicide down. Squad running around? Let me break down what I think is happening. Okay, talk to me. I think the Joker and the Batman are locked in a conflict in a city. Let's say Chicago. Let's say Gotham. Let's okay. say Gotham because that makes sense. That does so make sense. Batman and Joker are fighting in Gotham, yeah. and they're tearing things up, and then the Suicide Squad, and they're like, okay, we need to get these guys to stop. So we arrange for these guys to go in to capture the Joker, to stop Batman, whatever. I assume capture the Joker. Mm -hmm. But they're all bad guys. So... I think there's the background of Batman and Joker fighting. Yeah. I think that's going to be a background theme. But the main story is about the Suicide Squad. Okay. So Joker's not a part of it. I think he's the villain that the U.S. government is trying to stop. That's why they arranged for the Suicide, the suicide Squad. squad. Okay. They also mentioned that, like, what if Superman came down and killed everybody yeah. with the super side, Suicide Squad? I'm like, Suicide Squad's not going to do anything against Joker. Yeah, suicide Superman's squad. not going to be taken down by that. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that ties in directly to Batman versus Superman. It does. The, so, the theme. even, I think the DC films are doing a much better job of connecting everything than maybe the Marvel films did in phase one through two. Because there's, in, in this movie and the last movie, there's a theme of, what if Superman goes rogue and kills everybody? Yeah. So they're trying to stop him. That's true. But it also is a possibility of, like, okay, we get it. Superman is powerful. Get over it. Like, he's never going to hurt anybody. Right. Except when he kills people all the time. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, I don't think... It's, it's not a Batman movie. Ben Affleck is in it as Batman. But I think it's a Suicide Squad trailer movie. Suicide, Suicide Squad movie where there's things happening in the background and that's mm -hmm. the whole reason for them to go in to become the Suicide Squad. Is to like... I mean, maybe the whole reason is we need to get you guys together to make sure that like if Superman does come down, we need to protect... This is a training grounds. Mm -hmm. Go to Gotham where it's been run over by Joker's gang. And... Make it better. Hmm. That's essentially what I, what I think is going to happen. Okay. So, um, essentially the Suicide Squad, this was touched on in 
Arrow season one or season two, because mm-hmm. uh, it happens in one of those. Um, they put like little explosives in their brains, so if they do things that they're not supposed to do, they die. Their heads get blown up and they die. Mm-hmm. Um, so Slipknot has been rumored to die first. He's a character. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know a whole bunch about him, but he's he's very he's shown very slightly throughout the whole trailer and all the trailers. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of Slipknot evidence. So people like he's probably the example that makes everybody hesitant to break the rules. Yeah. So he probably does. That sounds pretty dark. I mean, it's, it sounds to me like it's gonna be dark humor too. Oh. Just yeah. gonna, which is kind of fits with DC. I feel like their approach to a lot of things has been kind of like the darker version of Marvel. DC stands for dark comics. Does it? No. You could have got me. I don't know. That was close. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Will yeah. Smith is the first header on the 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 poster. Yeah, I almost think that he's the main character. Yeah, I feel like he's the leader of the Suicide Squad. That's what I'm getting from the trailer. He's not necessarily there's there's Suicide Squad and they're with that military guy. Yeah, a bunch of guys like I'll kill you if you step out of bounds. Yeah, that's like he's like their captain. Oh, okay. Like, he's not a bad guy, but he's, like, the military captain overwatching this team. Now, is he part of the team? No. He's, like, the captain of the team. So, he's, like... He's, like, sitting behind enemy lines. He's, like, a... You know how sometimes when you walk... When you're driving down the highway and you see a whole bunch of inmates, like, mowing the yard? Mm-hmm. And there's a sheriff there? Yeah. He's, like, the sheriff. Okay. And the Suicide Squad is going into Gotham to mow the yard. Gotcha. Of uh, villains. Nice. That's my analogy. I liked it. I think it works. It was a good one. So he's the sheriff. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's going to... I think it's going to be much better than Batman v Superman. Because they're villains. They can kill whoever they want. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I'm, I still... I don't I heard some things... I don't know if you heard, heard about this, but Jared Leto, right? He's the Joker. Yeah, he's, he's insane. Uh, did you hear about his uh, Christmas gifts? Uh, he's been giving gifts to the uh, cast for a long time. Yeah. For Christmas, he gave them another set of crazy, gross, and weird gifts. I read, I saw a list of it on Epic Stream this week, so oh, yeah, it was pretty. So it's not okay for our podcast to talk about. That's how weird it is. I think he gave Margot Robbie a dead rat, yeah, or a live rat. I know he gave Will Smith bullets because he's right. Dead shot or whatever. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens with uh, Suicide Squad. I'm not as excited about Suicide Squad as the other two films that we've talked about. The two trailers, uh, definitely more excited for Doctor Strange than I am for Suicide Squad. But are you more excited for Doctor Strange now that you've seen the trailer? Yes, specifically because of the trailer. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and Rogue One. I'm more excited about Rogue One now than I was before. Again, because of the trailer. So. We'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we have some differing opinions today. Listeners, you can make up your own mind. If you haven't already seen the trailers, uh, this this conversation must have been really confusing for you. So maybe you want to go watch those now. See what yeah, we're talking about. Definitely <laughs> go watch those before you hear anything. And uh, last thing we want to talk about is a project that Tony primarily has been working on for a while. We were going to whisper about it for so long. We whispered. You may have heard in the whispers what, what we've been talking about. Uh, Tony, would you like to talk about it? Sure. You want me to talk? I mean, I don't. It's a YouTube channel called Underpaid Gamers Podcast. We have a YouTube channel now, <laughs> and we have so many episodes up there. We've got all our past episodes. We have all the podcast episodes are up there. Um, I finally got caught up with those. I have gameplay episodes. Of, there's, a, there's a Battlefront gameplay. There's Call of Duty gameplays. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a Let's Play of Ratchet & Clank right now. I'll, I plan on doing a Let's Play of Uncharted 4. Just, Justin has... Agreed to do a uh, a return to Destiny video with me. Yes. Where we are going to go back to Destiny here sometime soon and see and how just, much has changed yeah. and see how much trouble we can get ourselves into. Yeah. We're, we're just going to have no, uh, make no apologies and just, just go at it. Just, I told Justin this and his biggest fear was, what if I like it again? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we trash Destiny a lot on this podcast and maybe, maybe it's undeserved and we'll find out. Or maybe it's really deserved. Or maybe, or maybe we were right all along. We'll find out when oh, yeah. we uh, do our return to Destiny. So Both of us have recording devices, so we both can put up gameplays yeah. or whatever. Yep. And we, uh, have. We, we, we have stuff planned. I've got some gameplay of Fallout 4 that eventually I'll be posting. It's been a while. 
Yeah, you stopped playing that like a month ago. A month ago? It was like two weeks ago. Uh, Automation came out. Oh yeah. It was, only, right. it was only two weeks ago. So I've got I've got probably like three hours of footage with that. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but we'll see what I throw together. Yep. Uh you can find that on YouTube. That's underpaid gamers podcast. There was an underpaid gamers N Z. N Z, which I think stands for New Zealand. Yeah. And they have like fifty videos. It's all Minecraft. Maybe not. Maybe it's not fifty. Maybe it's like three. I saw three videos. Maybe it's three videos. And they were all Minecraft. Yeah. And uh, that's not us. That was not us. You'll recognize us from our logo. Yes. And our podcast episodes. Yeah. Uh, the same. And it's super cool. So And there's cool thumbnails. Yeah. Good job, Tony. Thanks. Uh, you can tweet at us at UP Gamers Podcast. You can email us at Underpaid Gamers Podcast at gmail.com. Yep. You, you can, can find check us on out YouTube at Underpaid Gamers Podcast. Or on our website at underpaidgamers.wordpress.com. Uh, we're on SoundCloud and iTunes for free downloads all the time. Please like us, share us with your friends, give us a rating share on iTunes. Share us with your enemies. Listen, if you're going to beat up at school and some guy's like, Give me all your lunch money. You're like, I don't have any lunch money, but I have the underpaid gamers. And he'll be like, what? And then he'll never beat you up again. That's right. You guys will have a lasting friendship. Yeah, so go ahead and flip that relationship around by sharing us. That's uh, all I got. Until next time. Until next time. See you guys later. Adios, muchachos.